one of the hosts of Good Morning Football, which airs Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern on NFL Network. And then the new extension series, GMFB Overtime. It streams for two hours right after that, right here on the Roku channel. Kyle Brandt kicking off hour number two. Good to hey, see you, sir. Hey, what's up, brother? Good Great to, to be here. Yo, I thanks, love Kyle. being here. I remember last time was my first time, and I will stand by my statement. Yes, sir. It feels like Jim Ursay's basement. <laughs> There's just so much cool stuff and memorabilia. I walk the halls when I'm waiting to come on. Yes, and if anybody doesn't know, so there's all these pictures that go on and on. It's guests over the years you've had in this yes, chair sir. and others. And I was trying to pick my favorite picture okay. in the hallway. It is. And I have the clubhouse leader. And it's someone who doesn't do a ton of media and who's been around for decades. It's you and Jody Foster. Yeah. And I was like, wow, oh. Jody Foster was on the show. I missed that one. <laughs> yeah. She was here. What do you remember about it? Uh, Everything. Her talking about <laughs> that's right. Uh, talking about her fantasy football team. She plays fantasy? And she's a Packers fan. Yeah. What? She, she loves Devontae really? Adams. Was it, it, was, yeah. it, was, it was, I think, Jordy Nelson was on her, one of her fantasy teams <laughs> back in the good. day. Yep, yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. How about so that? So, Clary Starling is sitting here saying, well, should I start Greg Jennings? I don't know. <laughs> He's tough against the Vikings. That's what, See, this is what I'm talking about. It's a really cool hang here. Yeah, just, she, I think she was saying she was thinking of starting Jermichael Finley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. But she knew he yes. and uh, Rodgers weren't vibing. That's we true. all had Jermichael Finley back in the day, right? He Everybody was that guy did. that was on yes. every fantasy team. You know that tight end Waiver wire, you pick yes. up your Michael for the bye week. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I get it completely. You know, and now you want a lion. That's for sure. Damn right you do. Best team in the NFL through 11 weeks, oh, Detroit yeah. Lions. Yeah. No question. I saw something that just, there's so many nuggets floating around about the Lions. You get lost in the numbers. Yeah. The disparity in yardage with them yesterday and the Jaguars was north of 400 yards. Yes. It was the largest disparity in a game since the 1970s. I think it was 1979. That's correct. I've got the stat right, Is that right? here because we, we have the same research staff. Yes, um, right, we do. So these, uh, 645 to 170 was the delta in total yards. 1979, the year I was born. And there has <laughs> never been a bigger ass whooping in the entire NFL than the one we saw yesterday. And I, you know, I was talking about this when I was with you guys. I was talking about it with with Kurt Warner. And Kurt says, what do you like about this team? They're so likable for just top to bottom. If you're not from Detroit, if you don't have a, a horse in the race, you, they pass the jersey test, which means if you go to center field in the middle of the game and look around the stands, most teams have two or three jerseys that yeah. people buy. I think the Lions have eight. You'll see Penny Sewell jerseys, offensive lineman jerseys. And I've been doing this for long enough, Rich, and I know you have too, that I remember it wasn't that long ago where there was a real groundswell of support to say – Enough with the Lions on Thanksgiving. End this tradition. They <laughs> yeah. suck. They're always terrible. We should end it now. Uh -huh. It's gone from we have to watch the Lions on Thanksgiving to we get to watch them. It's good. The Lions' inability to be competitive on Thanksgiving, I believe, is what born out a third Thanksgiving game. Really? Yes. That makes sense. That there, It, it was enough. So enough. I definitely, I, I know some television executives who are like, this is beachfront property. Yes. Why should we grant it to them? Because they sure. had it when Herbert Hoover was president. You know what I mean? Like, yes. and, and so that was the conversation. Yes. And now, you know, your bears are going to be coming in on that Thanksgiving yeah. and they're going to be holding on for dear life. You got to assume the crash position when you take on the Lions, because invariably as well, they beat you up so significantly, you're going to lose the next week too. I know. And I mean, that, that has been borne out. It's incredible. So far this season. It's, it has been borne out, and it will continue to be. I'm blown away by the theory of the third Thanksgiving game because of how bad the Lions I were. I believe it was. Obviously, Rich, you know, I'm in. Uh, obviously, you know, when, when money's on the table, yes. that, you know, now there's two Netflix games on Christmas yeah. Day, and we're going to be seeing more and more games added internationally to maybe create a package there. Um, I believe the third Thanksgiving night game yeah. was born out of like, let's create another one because <laughs> the first one is just basically year in and year out, mostly unwatchable. Yeah. And then we'll see who the Cowboys can bring in and jump into the kettlebell. Sure. And, and, and um, <laughs> so that, that's basically it. You know? Totally sets up. I buy it. It's, it's someone said, guys, the Lions are starting David Blau at quarterback on Thanksgiving. We got to get, I remember the Mike McMahon years. They, it, it's always terrible, but now it's like, can't wait to get to Thanksgiving Lions. Amazing. And, and you know, Dan Campbell doesn't have a vast history with, with the Lions. 
it does appear that they are balling up all of those years and just throwing it right back at the rest of the league. I know. You know, I was joking in hour one, like, w- which governor is going to come out of the blue and call him classless <laughs> for beating up on him? Like, right. Is it DeSantis because he beat up on a team from from uh, from Florida? I don't know. I mean, it's it's crazy what is going on right now with the Lions. They are the clear class of the NFL as we as we as we speak. I've got Kyle Brandt here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. We have not touched this subject yet, uh, figuring you'd be the perfect guy to do it. Go on. Your two cents uh, with the Bears yeah. on Sunday against the Packers is what? I mean, Rich, this is, this is like you have married Todd Lincoln the morning after the play. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? Let me get comfortable. How was the play, Mrs. Lincoln? Well, it wasn't great. Wow. Funny you ask. Um, okay. All right, so... <laughs> Emotional game. But just before you get into that, yeah, I've Todd never Lincoln had a guest reference. compare him or herself wow. to Mary Todd Lincoln before. You're Sally first. Field plays me in the movie, guys. That's it. Should have won the Oscar. Um, emotional game uh, for the fans. And I mean football, not even what happened yesterday. When you see a blocked field goal in that situation, in that context, you have to have a human emotion. Anger, uh, surprise, joy, whatever it may be. I promise you, Rich, I promise you, Mm -hmm. when that kick was blocked, I had zero human reaction whatsoever. I'm sitting here, and here they go, and the snap is down, and they they miss the kick, and it's blocked, and the Packers win. I didn't even bump my my heart rate. You talk about Jody Foster. Remember Dr. Chilton in Silence of the Lambs was talking about Hannibal Lecter? He goes... (laughs) His pulse never got above 85, even when he <laughs> ate her tongue. My pulse never even hit 75 when they blocked the field goal. It was this terrible, terrible feeling of having no feelings. That's what they've done to anybody connected to the Bears right now. It's sociopathic status where I wasn't even mad. I'm tired of being mad. I've run them disappointment, anger, fear, shock. It was just you're completely unimpressed, and then you, let's just go on to the next game. It was tough, really tough. Well, I have some numbers here. What do you got? What no, do you got? I, 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 have some, you got? I have some numbers here that I think can give you a little. I mean, it, it, there was a bump. I mean, like it did. It wasn't. It wasn't as bad as the previous weeks. I mean, the Bears obviously they scored a touchdown. Uh, they converted nine of 16 third downs. Mm-hmm. They were six of 40 in mm-hmm. the previous three games in that regard. Um, Caleb was hitting his back foot. I know. Finding people. Um, he had a career high in rushing yards. Um, his third career game with 300 or more total yards. Most by a Bears rookie since in the Super Bowl era. Um what else can I give you? Do did did you have the one where they lose 11 in a row to the Packers? Is that number on no, there? No, 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 that's on here. <laughs> the Matt LaFleur has never that, lost to the here. Packers. Yeah, that was, you know, what, what you illustrate with those, those points, Rich, is that the Bears had the team to beat the Packers yesterday. They had the quarterback to beat the Packers. Yeah. I don't think they had the guts to beat the Packers at the end of the game, and oh, I hate okay. the final sequence. And you know what? Bears fans may not have feelings, but they do have a memory. They didn't lose to Jaden Daniels and the Commanders because of a Hail Mary. They lost to Jaden Daniels and the Commanders and the Hail Mary the play before, the play that set up the Hail Mary, in which they didn't call a timeout, didn't get ready. They moved the ball up. Jaden Daniels chucks it. I hate the final sequence of the game yesterday for the Bears. If you want to get into the details, Caleb has the hottest hand he has had in his young career. His confidence is surging. They get a last completion to Keenan Allen. They hand it to Rashawn Johnson. They're on about the 30-yard line with 30 seconds left in a timeout, and they let the clock tick all the way down because they they were happy with a 46 yarder which was then blocked there are players on the Packers on the Packers field goal block team who said we were actually expecting them to run another play we had seen that Cairo Santos was kicking it they all saw it I don't think they played to win at the end of that game and I will give you an example of what they should have done Bill's Chiefs Sean McDermott bleeping went for it yesterday and they had a fourth and two and they could have gone up by five points to take the field goal he said no this is the Chiefs They're in our building. I'm going to beat them right now. And I don't think the Bears sideline did that with the Packers in their building. Eberflus had this to say. Figured that uh, you might bring this up and we'd have this soundbite in the shoot. This is what he had to say about his decision to just leave it where it was and let the the time tick down for the fateful field goal attempt. You know, they were loading the box there, you know, so you could you could say you could do that for sure, maybe get a couple more yards, but you also risk, you know, um, you know, fumbling and different things there. We felt where we where we were, you know, if we at the 36 or 35, you know, you're definitely doing that because you want to get it inside there. I felt very confident uh, where we were at that time uh, with the wind and where we were on the field. 
Great. This nonsense. I don't, I'm, I'm not here for it today, Rich. And I, you and I usually in lockstep, I, I don't do the kind of media where I fire this man. I hate that stuff. It's just not where I live. It's not my thing. Because uh, you, you know, you know, the National Football League and you know, there's, you know, families involved and stuff Absolutely. like that. So it, it Absolutely. And it's I respect Matt Abrafus. Exactly. It's and tough I've tough met him and I like him and he's a good person. I, it, at that point, it, you're telling me they're loading the box. Well, then throw. Caleb's on fire right now. Throw. You have time. You have a timeout. It just felt this feeling of, I think we're, we're good here. I, I don't want to do anything more. Let's just kick. And I don't think that's the way to beat any team, let alone a team that beats you every single year. you got to snap the neck. And they, they just didn't. I've never seen a team reel from a Hail Mary quite like this one. I know. You know what I mean? And like, I think that's what it is. You feel snake bit. You feel like um, you you got your hands on on ten and two and a foot yes. on a break. Yes, they you were know? they and were a four so, two team, and then they were cruising. And Caleb was on fire. I can't believe that I called their last win to date. Jacksonville in London. Yeah, and they looked great. They did. Oh my gosh! I know. You was were, I mean, he, Caleb was throwing pearls. He looked awesome, and they have one since. That's unbelievable. I know. I, if if I if uh, you know going down the elevator told Kurt Warner or anyone uh -huh. else when we were hanging out we're afterwards that um, hey we just called their last win for at least a month uh -huh. and they're going to fire their offensive coordinator yeah and then one of their losses is going to be you know a hail mary and another yes. one's going to be with a blocked field goal that's that. Imagine if you told Kurt, see that number 29 down there, that backup for the defensive back? Tyreek Stevens is going to be a household name. Like, everybody yes. knows who that guy is now, and they right. always will. Or, or in Munich, when we're in Munich talking yeah. to the Carolina Panthers about what, <laughs> what, what, is, what was happening with the Panthers, that uh, a week later, the care of Caleb Williams would be placed in the hands of a man who was the offensive coordinator mm -hmm. for this whole thing right. the previous year. <laughs> right. Like that, one who got them the guy. That they were going to audible to Thomas Brown. I know. But at least, you know, again, it, it did look better. And then I don't know if this is going to be helpful. I have an I have an old gen stat right here. Uh, <laughs> Not next be, gen, that's, old gen. Oh, these are old gen stats <laughs> right here. Go ahead and hit it. Let me see. Old gen oh, stats. Great. Yeah, we've, yeah, we've got animation and pencils and a whole setup. <laughs> uh, the blocked field goal. Yeah. That uh, cost the uh, game for the Bears. <laughs> It was the first and only blocked field goal uh, by the Packers of a potential game-tying or game-winning field goal on the final play of the game since November 26th, 1939 against the Cleveland Rams. <laughs> 39? That's the last time it happened. Those are the kind of things that are happening right now, the 30s. And that's our old gen stat. Beautiful. We're on the Rich Eisen show. Oh, Closing animation old as well. Gen Absolutely. Stats. Window dressing. And we have an old gentleman voice in it. It's everything. Dirty baseball. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make you feel any better that it's the oh, first time? Oh, I feel time totally better. Yeah, that's completely cleared it up. <laughs> these are things that just uh, happen once in, in centuries. But I, I appreciate you reaching for some sort of positivity. The positivity for the Bears might be, and is, I mean this. Is? Uh, they're very good against the Lions, and that includes the Dan Campbell Lions. They smacked them last year with Justin Fields. Like, they, they don't usually do – they don't play as well as they do against the Lions. They have – I don't want to say they have their number, but they have a chance against them, and Caleb looked good. So that's what we're doing. All right. Kyle Brandt yeah. here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show again. Good morning football on NFL <laughs> Network, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern every single morning, and then GMB, GMFB overtime right yep. here on the, the Roku channel. So let's, let's do this. With levels of concern <laughs> – all right, let's Kyle go. Brandt's levels of concern. Uh, let's start with because uh, again, you just tell me how I, I don't. I don't have numbers or DefCon. Do it. It's not like war games or anything like that. But <laughs> levels of concern. Yeah. Uh, your concern level for the San Francisco 49ers is what? It's pretty high. Yesterday was a big, big day for them, and that Geno Hero ball touchdown at the end. It's just it feel it, it feels like one step forward, two steps back every time. I keep waiting for the 49ers to do the Undertaker gift where they sit up and that the NFC should have kept them down while McCaffrey was out and they should have eliminated them. But Kittle's out yesterday. Ayuk out permanently. They finally get McCaffrey back. And it just feels sometimes with these seasons, these Shanahan teams sometimes have the just the snake bitten years where it's like we just can't get it together. I thought yesterday was gonna begin the run. And I still won't count them out. But I thought it was a horrible loss yesterday, in which they played really ugly and blew it at the end. Yeah, Nick Bosa looks like he's got something that's not just going to be a, a week to week thing, too. Yeah, like he he definitely it's an oblique or a hip or something like that. He couldn't get out there, 
and and you know he's you, yeah he's, he's gonna get out there if he can i know he was really happy a couple weeks ago off the field he looks miserable right now i know that so <laughs> he needs to better make times ob- nick he needs to make his oblique uh, great again maybe he I, should I, I don't know if it's gonna happen um that's one of those things again it's not like you put it in a sling and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden you can come back no but so, the niners i don't know if like so i this is something you i'm sure you guys have talked about the Niners might qualify for my favorite type of team this season yes. as we come down the stretch. I love the come running teams. The teams that are kind of middling, can't figure it out, 500, 5 and 6, and just go on a tear down the stretch. Now, they don't always get in because they lost too many games in September. Yes. But there's potential come running factor with the 49ers if they win next week. But there's some come running favorites. There's guys, there's Colts, there's the Dolphins. And it's used to always, the Phil Rivers Chargers teams used to always be come running. And they would always be like a game short. But it's so exciting because they're playing the best football late. They just don't have the best record. There's some teams that are sniffing around for that, too. Do you, what's your level of concern for the Bengals right now at four and seven? I adored this Bengals team. They're so fun. Me, too. I they're thought, so uh, I fun. can't, I can't quit them. I know. I don't know why I can't quit them. You know what? We it's we did this morning on Good Morning Football. We did the TNT treatment where I finally had to say they're they're gone fishing, and we got Burrow with the fishing net and the fishing hook. I got to oh. let them go. They're four and seven. They've lost three of four. They're so fun and so lovable, and they're so exciting. But they almost never win. They have a feeling to me that like they're like a basketball team. And I think Collinsworth was on it last night where he's like, this team's at its best when it just starts jacking up threes. You know, just start chucking it left and right. And they usually don't win, but they are one of the most fun bad teams I have ever seen. And I want Joe Burrow in the playoffs. I say this all the time. It's a better playoffs as Burrow is in because he's the only guy alive who's still beaten Mahomes in a playoff game outside of Tom Brady. And they're just not, we have to let them go. Four and seven is, we can't follow them to four and seven. I was watching the game with my two boys and um, and as they showed Burrow trudging off the field, I'm like, there goes the greatest four and seven quarterback ever. So true. You know what I mean? And 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 I, I heard what Collinsworth was saying when they go five wide, he goes, yeah. this is when they're at their best. Yes. You know, like what are they screwing around with any other, you know, uh, formations? Just go five wide and let Joe Burrow do his thing. And you look at their schedule the rest of the way. They've got to you, you figure they've got to run the table six and zero. They got to go six and zero. And so they're going on a buy. Let's do this. Okay. They go on a buy. Home for Pittsburgh. I don't like it. No, hold on a second. <laughs> right, right. At Dallas. <laughs> at Tennessee. Yeah. Okay. Home for Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Denver. You know that could be one of those a great games game. that that it it's for the tie break. Mm-hmm. For the at the end of the day, and then at Pittsburgh. Hey. Yeah, I mean they got to go six and zero there, right? They can't go five and one and 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 stroll in nine and eight, right? Even if they have the tie break on Denver, I think you got to get to ten think. and seven, don't you think? They're four and seven. They got to get there. It doesn't make sense either, Rich. It's not just for the usual things. So there's a lot of teams that have talent, but they're four and seven. Joe Burrow leads the NFL in touchdown passes. Jamar Chase leads the NFL in receiving yards, and it's not just oh their offense is great. They have the NFL sack leader. Trey Hendrickson leads the NFL in sacks. It doesn't make sense. And yet there they are, four wins in 11 games. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't follow you that far. I'm, I'd love to. It's more fun than them getting the playoffs than somebody who might, but I don't think it's going to happen. I'm do sorry. You, what, do you, what's your level of concern? I'm going to go, go uh, higher rent. Um, seven and four Washington Commanders. Once upon a time, seven and two. Yeah. Uh, Jaden Daniels, you know, he's putting that heat pack on his stomach. I know. The... Uh, d- would that be a good fantasy team name, TJ? Uh, Daniels' tummy, <laughs> tummy packet. Are you uh, into that, TJ? You like it? What it's do you okay. think? It's all right. Passable. Uh, he's Put just saying. He's just trying to be nice. That's okay. I like Jim Irsay's basement better. Jim Irsay's basement? That's the name of the league that I play in, Jim Irsay's basement. It's all right? good. No, it oh, okay. should be, though. It's very it good. Um, do you have a level of concern for the Washington Commanders? Seven and four. I'm concerned for him. He doesn't look like him. That, he doesn't that, look like that, him. Yeah, no, he doesn't look like him at all. He does. He barely runs. He doesn't throw as accurately. I think something happened to his ribs, and I just don't know if he's the same now. Maybe he will be after this. And you know what? Like, do we think the Commanders are going to win the Super Bowl this year? No. I look at them a lot like I look at the Broncos. So the Broncos get a great win. Yes, looked awesome. The prior two weeks, they had the heartbreaker against Kansas City. They lose to Baltimore. So fine. They, they lost to some great teams in the AFC with some great quarterbacks. That doesn't mean I want to throw you on the scrap heap. I think still they're going to go to the playoffs. I don't think Washington's going to win the Super Bowl this year. I doubt they'll win a playoff game, but I think they'll be there. And it's a credit to them that we're even talking about them potentially losing in the first round of the playoffs and that being some kind of letdown. So concerned that they're going to go to the divisional? Probably, yes. Highly concerned. But I still think they'll go to the playoffs. Okay. So um, let's go even higher rent. Eight and two Vikings. Do you have a level of concern about them? Yeah, they just they have that feeling of 
man, we peaked really early. I hate to say it, and in the standings, they were the best story of the first month of the season. I don't think it was close. I think the last month from where we are now, it's been the Steelers. But September, it, it was astonishing. The Darnold and the KOC, it was amazing. And now they still win, and their record is good. But do you like them better than the Lions? Of course not. Do you like them better than the Packers? We'll see. Um, I don't like them better than Philadelphia. I think that the problem with Vikings is they set our expectations so high that this could be the story of the year. And if you compare them to some of these NFC teams right now, they just don't pass the look test. I, level of concern, Vikings, is pretty high. So who's going to wind up being, TJ, I'd like you to chime in here, mm -hmm. the proverbial NFC team nobody's going to want to face? The Packers turned out to be that team. Yeah. And it would have been amazing to have called your Packers shot mm -hmm. in between weeks 11 and 12 mm -hmm. last year. So I understand <laughs> what I'm asking right yes. now. You're shaking your head. You don't think there is one? I... It's got to come from the NFC West. How does that sound? Is there anyone that really, I mean, that gets the Niners maybe, but are well, they what scared? What about the Rams? Or... You know, you don't believe really in gonna, help uh, with the uh, definition uh, of never really wants to face. You? Like, so we're not talking about the Lions. What are we talking about? The, the proverbial team yes, in like that this. first round of the playoffs, you just don't want to face. You don't, want to, you, don't want, you, you don't want them. You don't want to draw them. Dallas drew the wrong one last year, and yeah. look what happened. They've, they're all in to all the way to today. I got one. What do you got? The Cardinals. It's yeah. the Cardinals. Okay. I, I love the Cardinals. And the origin story here, I know a lot of people love them now. Last year, it's a four-win team, all right? It's, it's the sleepy little market. No one's interested. A head coach who's meme to bejesus and a quarterback who everybody makes fun of. They only won four games. Those four games were badass. They beat the hell out of the Cowboys. Right. They beat the Steelers. And then this year, they come out, and they had a couple games. Everybody wrote them off. When I knew they was big time, and I was on this, I said, when we're going into the Cardinals-Dolphins game, it is the same weekend that the Call of Duty video game comes out. It comes out two <laughs> days prior. All right, it comes out on Thursday. Yes. The game is Sunday. Yes. That is the Call of Duty Bowl for Kyler Murray against the Dolphins. If he plays terrible in that game, they're going to eat him alive. I bet you he'll be majestic. And he was incredible. If he can beat Call of Duty, he can beat somebody in the wild card round. So now are you saying that he beat the fact that he would have – been consumed yeah. some of his prep time was yeah. consumed by call of mess. duty yes he would have been i did a 72 hour binge on call of duty i have no idea what the dolphins are doing <laughs> defensively i'm totally lost rich in that game he was so dialed in the dolphins defenders were like wow kyler's here and i'm a huge kyler murray supporter in 2024 because We've done every single video game joke, every study clause, every sh he's short joke. I just am over it. I think it's not funny anymore. So I'm rooting for him. And I do not want to tackle James Conner in the wild card round. And I don't want to have to contain Kyler. Right. That's the team. Except that if the playoffs started today, it's Green Bay at Arizona. Green Bay is my team you don't want to play in the playoffs. You like them? Again. They almost lost to the Bears yesterday. Do you understand that? The Bears? They, I, mean, they, they I don't think Green Bay is playing that but well. But this is when Green Bay started putting the pedal right. to the metal yeah. last year. Yeah. You know, and, 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 for sure. Josh Jacobs runs hard. They have four good receivers. Yeah. You like what you're seeing from Love? It's weird. It's sloppy. Yeah, he's, it's playing, wonky. he's playing Farvian, which was always fun. <laughs> All right, but Farv's when an MVP is doing it, though. I, I don't know. He doesn't have the same. He's not under the radar like he was last year. He's also this not emerging star. Now he is the star. I'm not afraid of the Packers right now. And I think it's because they almost lost to the Bears. Hmm. And that's a terrible currency. All right. Last one for you. Yes. Kyle Brandt. <laughs> How about this one? Best team Josh Allen's ever had. The current 2024 Buffalo Bills. Yay or nay? Nay. Why? Nay. It doesn't matter. The other ones had the stars on them. The it's other the best, ones the best the record he's had. I understand and, that. Yeah. So I, I but this is the a, this is a team, man. This is a team. Like uh, if James Cook isn't going to be running between the tackles, yeah. let's get Ray Davis. If we're yeah. not going to have Keon Coleman, Go on, Ritz. Go on. Or we don't have Stephon Diggs <laughs> here. We don't have Dalton Kincaid. It's going to be Khalil Shakir moving the sticks. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna Dawson. It's going to be the Dawson Knox, um, you know, reclamation <laughs> weekend. You know, Shoeless Mac Hollins. Shoe, you know what I mean? Shoeless Mac Hollins. You know, like uh, it doesn't matter that no Poyer, no Trey White didn't work with them. They got a game from Vaughn yesterday, you know? And let's do it. Every now and then you might get you might get a Vaughn game. Mm -hmm. Best team Josh Allen has ever had the current 2024 Buffalo Bills. <laughs> I, I now took one last hack at it. I'm not saying that you have to change your answer, but what? what I, 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 I still think that team in overtime at Arrowhead with Sim sitting on the bench and losing the coin talk. I, I think that was a runaway Super Bowl champion. I love that team. I Listen, I really respect this team. It's a very compelling case you just laid out, Thank too. You. And it's there's this sense of, screw it, Josh Allen's going to do it himself. 
I, I don't think it's the best team they've ever had. I think it's the best record they've ever had. And my take larger today, mm -hmm. Rich, about the Bills is don't pretend like yesterday was a huge deal. Don't make it a bigger deal than it was. Well, Josh did not. I love it. He, I know. I, I did, too. It. He kind of totally downplayed Refuses it. Refuses to give it any credit. Just another game in the schedule. Even the McDermott saying there was not a statement game. There's no parade today. Josh Allen has beaten Patrick Mahomes four times. He does it pretty much every year. So don't act like we have to do backflips now because we beat the Mahomes team. Just p business as usual. I loved Josh Allen after the game, Tracy mm -hmm. Wolfson. And I know it gets a little exhausting because from Josh, you want a little more of a human reaction. Do you see him in the end zone? He's a complete maniac. That's his human reaction. <laughs> right. But the fact that he has this way to come down and say, not really that impressed with ourselves. We'll see them again. I would take the cue from him. That was so professional and so cool. But the sense, again, that in the same way that we're thinking the Chiefs aren't all that because they're so lucky and they're yeah. going to have to – how long can they keep pulling it out of their, yeah. you know, orifice? <laughs> and so the general sense is that for the Bills in this regard is when, when the playoffs hit, mm -hmm. the fact that they don't have those star players and those big-name, bold-face, Pro Bowl, short fire players. Yeah. Um, it's going to haunt them. That, that Against a, a Ravens team that's already beaten them, it'll haunt them. Uh, against the Steelers team that they're going to end up having to see potentially, right? It'll haunt them. And I don't I don't know, man. Like, there, there's, a, there's a beauty in the sum of the parts that's going on right now. And they have the one huge part in Josh Allen. That's why I'm asking. Best team he's ever had. If I'm going to make the case and help you make the case, and if I would come over, I think it's because Josh Allen's the best place he's ever been between the ears. I don't think he's ever been happier. Now, I'm talking about his team, his huddle, his roster, from everything I understand about his personal life is going swimmingly, and God bless him for that. But the Steph Diggs thing wasn't really a start-to-finish thing. That was a playoff thing. Diggs would lose his mind sometimes in the playoffs. He would not play, not perform well. He'd do the sideline histrionics. He'd do all of that. And Josh would constantly be asked about it. And I think that he was very happy to have him leave, not because of the season. They had great memories. And they, Steph Diggs was a great Buffalo Bill. Yeah. It would always be something in the playoffs. So when you watch his body language and him before games, during games, I think Allen has never been lighter and happier and um, that would be the case is that he could do it because of how good he feels. Yeah, the play caller, everything. And he, and he yes. did say afterwards multiple times, there's a lot of love in the locker room. And I believe it. You know, and they're not going through, you know, knock on wood. Off the field crazy stuff. Yeah, I remember. You know, where the snowstorms yeah, and, and all the this tragedies. crazy all, stuff. It was terrible. Right. Like, the DeMar. Like, and and nobody's, you know, and, and the coach is now being praised for his button pushing. I know. McDermott was awesome yesterday. That's what I'm saying. Awesome. Awesome. And, you know, he's not Belichick's little brother. There's none of that going on. It's just a matter of do they run into one of these AFC juggernauts who they're always there and they don't they couldn't handle Pittsburgh or they can't handle Baltimore. I, I think they're going to play Kansas City again. Mm. And, you know, I was <laughs> I'm pushing everybody on the show this morning because this is prisoner of the moment morning for the Bills. And I'm trying so hard to step back. Yep. And say, do not jump the Chiefs. Do not pick them apart. Just don't do it, especially against the Bills. I bet if we look up last year and Good Morning Football, we need at our show, we're probably saying when the Bills beat them last year, this is the year. It wasn't the year. We saw the Chiefs get their doors blown off on Christmas by the Raiders, and then they haven't lose, lost for the next nine months. I won't step on the Chiefs right now. I, I'm trying to have the perspective to step back and be like, all right, they won 15 in a row, and Buffalo was better than them last night. They'll still be there. Uh, and I kind of made reference to on game day morning yesterday when you yeah. were on it, like if you just lose yourself in the bills, you and Chris Berman are going to go on vacation together at some point. <laughs> Boomer! You can just, just circle the wagons. We will in circle Cancun. the wagons. I am. Um, Watanao, you and him. <laughs> Me and Red and Andy just hugging. The Bills Redemption. <laughs> and Boomer sanding a boat and working on a hotel. Um, I, I have to, I have to give one one uh, lovable moment that I love from game day morning yesterday. Sure. So I'm there with with Rich with, with and Kurt and Gerald and Mooch and everything, and we're playing a game show. And the point of the game show is the answers to the game show are ridiculous player names that you would never imagine are real players. <laughs> the answer to the question is DiCaprio Booty, who is a real player who was on the Chiefs for a little bit. The second Rich says the words DiCaprio Booty, I am like a dog in heat. I need to make a Leo DiCaprio dating joke. It is why I get out of bed in the morning. I have to make it. But there's 50 different voices on set, and I just it's not set up for that. So I know no one else on set's going to make him. Sure enough, like bleeping clockwork, Eisen comes in with the perfect PG-13, not R, but also not PG, reference to DiCaprio's dating life. And I was like, 
Thank you, Rich. I can't end this segment without doing it. You yeah. were there for me. Yeah, he he had a two-year career, so I'm like, go figure. DiCaprio had a young career. Come on! That's what I need. It's all I need. We have to check that box. That was, that was your reaction. There it is. That right was there. me. Because <laughs> I'm sitting there being like, please, someone acknowledge DiCaprio and Booty put together in one name. We have to make a joke. And I had the beer and the cigarette. Yes. yes. Was, was he out of the league by 25? No, See, 22. You get it, Brockman. <laughs> if you would have been there, I could have yeah, eaten, but I only had Rich. Mariucci is not making the joke about DiCaprio. He's, he's, no, he's not doing it. He, that, that was the next level. He was in the league from 21 to 22. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And the second he hit him, DiCaprio just cut him. Turn in your playbook. It's over. Kyle Brand, everybody. Thank you. Check him out every single day on Good Morning Football, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern on NFL Network, and then the two hours afterwards right here on the Roku Sports Channel. You're the man. Thanks for coming in. Coming here. up next in Rich Eisen, so DiCaprio Booty right here in this chair. Uh, Thank you, Rich. Yeah! <laughs> Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku Channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.